Hello everybody, this is JT Curtis and I am currently still in uh, Texas in Fort Worth and I am uh, appearing to you guys uh, via YouTube because um, we lost somebody very special this weekend, the great Chuck Berry. I, I mean, I don't know what I can say about Chuck Berry that hasn't already been said. I mean, everybody by now should know that if it weren't for Chuck Berry, there would be no rock and roll as we know it. Um, certainly there'd be no Beatles, no Rolling Stones, no Led Zeppelin, um, no anybody really. I mean, I mean, even to this day, um, I think all rock and roll licks are based off of Chuck Berry in one shape or another. Um, I, I talked about Chuck Berry in the history of rock and roll of the 50s quite a bit. And, you know, I, I really think it is a fair assessment to say that um, he is the father of rock and roll, um, maybe with little Richard. Um, though I, I think I'd... Uh, with Little Richard, it's tough because Little Richard really is just that pure, raw energy that kind of comes out and comes at you. Um, Chuck's a little more subdued. He's not really screaming as much. Um, but with Chuck really comes this whole different approach to the genre. Um, I mentioned in the history of rock and roll in the 1950s that really Chuck Berry was kind of a country artist when you think about it. Maybelline was him trying to make uh, Ida Red, which was a country song. Um, I think the story goes that he was going to just do Ida Red, but he didn't realize, well, you, you know, then you're going to have to deal with like copyright issues or whatever. So he just wrote Maybelline just so he could still do the song but have his own words. Um, and thus... You know, the rest is history. Rock and roll was born. Um, I also mentioned that um, I think a lot of it is Boogie Woogie Piano um, that he's playing on uh, electric guitar, which explains why Johnny B. Goods in B flat and uh, Roll Over Beethoven's in E flat. Um, and it's just, it's just such a, I, I really can't comprehend where that came from in the 50s because it really just came out of nowhere. And, you know, it, it's not like, I don't think Chuck Berry was a huge, huge artist at that time. Um, you know, just like, you know, Little Richard wasn't the biggest artist at that time. Pat Boone's cover of Tutti Frutti was bigger than his. Um, but everybody listened to him, everybody. Um, and, you know, uh, there really is something to be said for his, you know, uh, story-based um, songwriting. Um, Johnny B. Good is obviously the standard. Everybody, I think, I became aware of Johnny B. Good by, as I'm sure a lot of you did, which is Back to the Future. I remember watching Back to the Future and the famous scene uh, in uh, when he, when Michael J. Fox plays uh, Johnny B. Good and, and he goes, Chuck! Chuck, it's Marvin! You know your cousin Marvin Perry? You know the new sound you're looking for? Well, listen to this! It's you know, it's like the, this iconic moment, and that's the Chuck Berry. The other, the interesting thing is that it's also on the Voyager Golden Record. Um, Johnny B. Good is ac actually represents Earth music to aliens. So I, I think I even said in there, you know, how can this not be the greatest rock and roll record of all time? Uh, and it's true, but there's more than that. I mean, I, I would have, I could have talked about Chuck Berry forever in uh, the 50s uh, uh, documentary, but then it would have been even longer. And would have taken more time. Um, but, I mean, you know, it's like... I was thinking the other day about that song, Brown-Eyed Handsome Man. And, uh, you know, just what a what an interesting uh, song that was. Um, talking about, you know, it's kind of like... It's almost like a race relations uh, record. Because I believe the story goes that Chuck Berry wrote it when he saw... Um, I think it was a Hispanic man was getting arrested by the police and his uh, mother or wife was, you know, screaming at him, you know, if you want your job, you better free that brown eyed man or brown skinned man or whatever, you know, I think the original title was brown skinned man. I think they changed it to brown eyed handsome man for whatever reason. And, you know, it was like, you know, a whole, you know, outcry, whatever at that time. What a great song that is. You know, and it's also great that, you know, in that period where rock and roll died and um, Chuck Berry went to jail, that he came back and it was, he did um, 
uh, Nadine, is that you? And um, uh, goes to show you never can tell. Again, Pulp Fiction is probably where all of you know that from. And that he just kept going. My Dingling. I mean, I think My Dingling that came out in the '70s, and that was a number one hit. Like, that was actually a number one hit. <laughs> You know, like I have my, my book of, you've seen it in the video, the book of the number one hits. That's a number one hit, My Tingling. And he's even got a, why was that a number one hit? Of all of the songs that he wrote, My Tingling, that was the number one hit he got. That makes no sense. Um, and yeah, I mean, he just kept doing, there's a great documentary, um, which I used a lot of footage for um, the history of rock and roll from called Hail, Hail Rock and Roll. And you really, it really shows Chuck Berry for what he is. I mean, he's a genius musician, genius writer, everything, but he's a strange cat. He's he's a he's a weird guy, and you really kind of see that he's very, very protective. Um, you know, you wouldn't want to mess with them. Uh, and just when him and Keith Richards are getting into it, it's it's the funniest shit you've ever seen in your life. I I can't recommend it more. Um, you know, everybody, I've been looking at my Facebook wall, everybody's got a Chuck Berry story. Um, you know, the, the guys from the Uptown Horns, um, j just a whole bunch of people I know, uh, they, you know, they worked for Chuck Berry in one uh, way or another. I never did, but the only Chuck Berry story I really have is I saw him, um, Arthur Migliazza, uh, who was a um, keyboard player in Mad Mongoose, uh, uh, he and, he, uh, told me he was going to pick Chuck Berry up at the airport and uh, drive him uh, over to B.B. King's where he was playing for, um, this was New Year's Eve. And I was living in Midtown at the time, so we were hanging out. And he said, you want to go see the show? I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll go see the show. I've never seen Chuck Berry. He was in his 80s by this point. Um, this was like a number of years ago. Um, New Year's Eve 2010. And so we go to see Chuck Berry and, and, you know, New Year's Eve, Times Square New Year's Eve is not easy to get through, but, uh, we get over there and, um, you know, uh, everybody's really cool. Band is great. And then Chuck comes on, he's got two freaking amps behind him and they're, lo they're so freaking loud. And I just, Chuck was not good. I mean, I love Chuck and I was really, and I, I expected that it wasn't going to be great, but it, it was just just wasn't good. I mean, you could just tell at the end, he was at the end of his, you know, life. And, you know, in one way, it's great to see this, you know, this master of rock and roll, you know, the guy who invented rock and roll. I'm so glad I got to see him. But man, it was, it, it was a little hard to watch. I mean, he kept detuning his guitar. He would, um, he would um, play a song like I remember he was playing, I think he was playing um, Around and Round, and then mid-song, he starts playing Johnny B. Good, and he had already played Johnny B. Good, <laughs> and it's like, okay, Chuck's a little, uh, little out tonight. Um, but the funniest part is just watching uh, the other guys on stage, uh, Daryl and all the guys, uh, Daryl was a piano player, and they're just like, you know, they're literally just watching him for the entirety of the show, just waiting to see what he's going to do. And it's the same thing in Hail, Hail, Rock and Roll. There's a great moment in Hail, Hail, Rock and Roll where he goes up to Keith Richards and says, after the solo, let's go to B, and they're in C. And Keith just goes, oh. It's hilarious. <laughs> Keith's like, when, when Keith Richards is the responsible one, you know something's wrong. Um, but yeah, um that was Chuck Berry. And, you know, it's, um, that's the way he was. I mean, you know, like, like any, you know, he was a human being. He had probably his demons. He had, um, his problems, but he was a master. He's the reason rock and roll is still alive today. And we're all playing today. And that's how it will always be. I mean, we all, uh, if you're a guitar player, you uh, you owe Chuck Berry. He was the guy who started it. Um, and not to take away from other great guitar players, I mean, you know, you can go back to Robert Johnson and even before then, but he just, what he did with the guitar, the idea of using the guitar 
like a horn section, like, you know, that's what like, that looks like a horn section opening that he's doing on guitar. And that is rock and roll. Um, and not to say that that's all rock and roll is, but yeah, just everything he did is the fact that he could play guitar so well, um, that he could write such, um, as John Lennon said, uh, he was writing intelligent lyrics, um, thought provoking lyrics when people were saying, baby, I love you. So I mean, stage presence, I mean, you know, the famous duck walk he does and just, you know, he just had a presence on stage and he just was one of a kind. Um, uh, you know, somebody had said to me, it's the end of an era. I go, well, really, he's the beginning of an era. Chuck Berry is the beginning of the era. And I guess, you know, we should be thankful that he made it to 90. I mean, I got the chance to see him. It wasn't very good, but I got the chance to see him and recognize that there he is. He's a living legend right there. He's really old and he can't play anymore, but... I'm just, I'm thankful that I got to see him. So, hey, Arthur, thanks for getting me to go see him. <laughs> you know, um, I'm sure Arthur Migliazzi probably has a lot of interesting stories. But, um, but yeah, it really was, um, he was one of a kind. Uh, Chuck, wherever you are, man, uh, keep rocking, man. Thanks for, uh, thanks for teaching us how to play guitar. Um, go, Johnny, go. Roll over Beethoven. Tell Tchaikovsky the news. Goes to show you never can tell. Insert Chuck Berry song here. <laughs>